Cheryl Hecht is a gambling specialist and therapist at the Pedersen Craig Center. She joins us to discuss treatment and resources provided by the GAMPRO program. Cheryl, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Art. What can you tell us about GAMPRO? GAMPRO is a comprehensive gambling treatment program at the Pedersen Craig Center's Huntington site. Mm -hmm. What we do is we bring in people that were referred to us and we assess them for their level of gambling and if necessary, we send them to an inpatient level of care. If they can manage their addiction on an outpatient basis, we offer individual treatment as well as groups with the support of GA in the community. And GAMPRO is pretty unique in Suffolk, right? Yes, we're the only gambling treatment program in the county of Suffolk. Wow, and of course, gambling today is, is a very common behavior, wouldn't you say? Yes, it is, it's very common. And with New York State expanding gambling, there'll be more, more of a need for the program for the uh, residents of Suffolk. Now, would you say that's because more people will gamble or because of the type of gambling or does it, does it matter much? Well, with increased exposure, you know with any addiction, with increased mm -hmm. exposure, there's people that uh, find it a problem. The average person would take this uh, increase and, um, you know, they're social gamblers. They would go and do it for recreation, like going to a concert or a movie or some other leisure time activity. But there are other people that can't stop. They spend more money than the, what they would originally intend. And, um, you know, it becomes a problem for them personally and professionally. So it's, it's similar to other addictions in terms of using beyond what you intended to, using yes. despite adverse consequences and, yes, and things yes. like that. Very true. But this is a silent addiction. Mm. It's not like you will smell it. It's not like you'll see it. And in America, um, it's, it's not socially acceptable to talk about your financial means. So it's very hidden because people keep their financial, um, their financial income close to their chest, so mm -hmm. to speak. So there's a lot of secrecy regarding it, and often family members are the last ones to know. So they wouldn't know if somebody took investments or assets and liquidated them, and then they find out at the end that um, all the money is gone. So it's a real, real problem, and um, you know they can't get their loved ones help early on when they should. And it clearly is a family issue and I imagine there is a need to involve family members and very much so family support is very very important and it's also important to create barriers between the identified gambler and their money so if they mm -hmm. can have a family member that's a financial partner that will assist them where they can offer an opinion about the finances but not actually be handling the money that's often very helpful so in a sense once the compulsion really takes hold, once the addiction is powerful, you need some external controls almost, some external ways to help them deal with that temptation because they may not always be able to Very much so. It. Gamblers typically have poor concepts of money. So what we do is we introduce budgeting, um, money management with a financial partner. We, um, if they don't have a family member that can help, we often introduce a fiduciary so they can help uh, take care of the finances and we expose them to programs like GA pressure relief where their sponsor will work with them and pressure relief people will work with them on their budgets paying down uh, their regular monthly bills as well as paying off any gambling debt maybe bookies or loan sharks or um, any other type of gambling debt that they may have. You referred to GA that GA that's Gamblers Anonymous. Gamblers Anonymous. How closely do you work with that? How does your work kind of very much so. That. We get a lot of refer referrals from Gamblers Anonymous because there are people that attend, but yet their sponsors are seeing that they're really not doing as well as they could. So they know that they need a higher level of mm -hmm. care, and that's when the referrals come. And I imagine there's a prevention component to what you do as well in that regard. Very much so. We have a prevention specialist. Her name is Melissa Wayne. She goes into the school districts, and she is doing an OASIS presentation that describes problem gambling. And it's being built into a program um, called Teen Intervene. And um, it explains the odds. It explains how pretty much the house always wins mm -hmm. and gives a good basis so that children understand that, you know, 
you um, shouldn't get involved, that uh, the house always wins more or less and it's not a good practice. Mm. And, and I'm sure a lot of parents that are watching are thinking about their kids in regard to the availability of gambling, particularly the internet. What are your thoughts on that in terms of how parents might monitor that? Because there, there are gambling opportunities on the internet as well. Well, it's always good to use filters, you know, and to check what your child is doing, observe what your child is doing. But there's also a program that you can purchase called Gamble block so you can load that onto any of your electronic devices that have internet access and it will block you from gambling sites and sports sites hmm. and I see that you have um, an initiative here know the odds yes tell us about that that was put out by the New York Council on problem gambling and it's a uniform message that's being distributed all over New York State telling us and educating us about gambling uh, because since gambling was the hidden addiction and we're so far behind where substance abuse is as far as awareness in the state, um, we're trying to provide education and we're trying to provide links to, um, links to treatment. So um, the website gives you all of that. It gives you the locator, it gives you films and big vignettes so that you can see um, people that are like you experiencing different problems and mm -hmm. where to go for help. Hmm. So it's a very, very important resource in New York State. And you're going to be seeing it. Uh, we had 600 um, commercials on cable TV this summer. We had ads on WBAB. We had posters on Long Island Railroad platforms and on timetables. So you're going to be seeing the message more and more. Mm -hmm. Upstate New York, it's been on billboards. It's been everywhere. So it's a very good resource. Well, sounds great. I mean, it, it just strikes me as, as we're talking, you know, there's so many people that may be susceptible to developing a gambling problem, and they may not be aware of it. What kind of self-check can somebody do if they're thinking about starting to gamble? What kinds of things should they be aware of for themselves? Well, you have to set your limits. If you become preoccupied with gambling, if you're giving more and more thought to it, more and more time, you're spending over your head, then it's time to check in. It's time to have that conversation with someone. Cheryl, if anybody would like to get in touch with you about the GAMPRO program, how would they do that? they would call 631-920-8053 and speak to program staff. They'll take the application, give you any information you want about the program, and then set up an appointment for assessment. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.